Today I'm going to be making and installing this floating shoe shelf. Welcome to another episode. In the previous episode I showed designing this floating shoe shelf and in this episode we're going to go to my Yeti SmartBench CNC router, cut out the parts, and then I'm going to assemble and install them. So let's head to the workshop. I started with a full sheet of plywood. In my case, this is a four by eight foot sheet of plywood that's marked as three quarter inch thick. It's actually 18 millimeters. So as I mentioned in the previous video, it measures at 0.7 inches. I'm using a quarter inch diameter compression bit cutter. So the compression cutter has a spiral change that is 0.12 inches from the bottom. That means that the, the very bottom of the tip, or the very tip, it's an upcutting end mill, and then for the rest it's down cutting. And the idea of that is to minimize the splintering of the fibers. And then here you can see I'm cutting the dados, or the slots, that will allow good alignment between the different parts. I'm making sure that I start my cuts about 0.15 inches deep so that I'm getting below the 0.12 compression cutter on the first cut. I'm using a scrap piece of plywood to check the fit of the plywood into the slots. And it's a pretty tight fit, which I thought was a good idea. I discovered the next morning when things had a chance to absorb some water from the air that this was probably a little bit too tight, so I ended up putting it in my air-conditioned workshop to have it dry out, and then I was able to assemble it, as you'll see a little bit later, with some persuasion. Both the cleats and the top board have uh, two sides that are not at a 90 degree angle. For the cleats, they're 45 degrees, and then for the top board, it's a 60 degree angle, at least from this perspective. So I decided I was going to rough those out with the quarter inch end mill and then come back with a 45 degree or 90 degree included angle cutter for the French cleats and then likewise an appropriate cutter for the 60 degree angle. The thing that I discovered is that the dust extraction system that I'm using is not able to pull all of the chips out. But the other thing I found out is that I ended up with some long skinny pieces of wood that ended up getting clogged in my dust extractor. So I'm not really a fan of the way that I tried to do the dovetails on the CNC router. And so I ended up taking these to my friend's house where he has a table saw and we finished up the 45 and the 60 degree angles on his table saw and that was so much easier. I'm drilling the holes all the way through using a 1 8 inch diameter drill. These are so that I can drill from the other side with the countersink and have everything nicely aligned. Now this is pretty slow so I've sped it up here and that'll give you a better idea of the holes that it's drilling in the different parts. I found that a good way to remove the tabs is with the chisel. You can see I'm doing a slicing action and I'm keeping it against the vertical side of the part and that makes it actually quite easy to slice this off uh, very cleanly. On this project I made some good choices and I made some bad choices. This is a good choice which is starting at one end and starting with the first board. Pre-drilling the holes was also a good choice because it meant that when I countersunk the holes as here, they were directly in the center of the other board. So they were perfectly aligned. So then adding some glue to the rabbit and the data joints, and then it was ready to put the top in place. And of course it fit in the rabbit just fine, but the data side required a little bit of persuasion with a mallet because as I mentioned, I made the slots a little bit too tight. So then I started countersinking the holes and I got a little bit carried away, as you'll see in the next hole. I mean, this hole is fine. But then I started to go to holes that didn't have any boards behind them yet. And really what I want to do is uh, countersink, but also drill slightly into the board that I'm going to be screwing into. So here I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. And then I finally got around to installing the three screws that will hold the side into the top board. 
And then countersinking for the front board. And then adding screws for the front board as well. And the final screw in the front board. I found that this uh, subtle control for spreading the glue is also quite good for being able to collect uh, excess glue that squeezed out. So I used it both on the top and then also along the back of the front board. And this is where things start to go wrong. You can see that I'm getting ready to put the other side on, but I haven't thought about the middle support or the boards that go in between, and therefore I haven't thought about the assembly order. The boards on the back have to go in before this side goes on. And it's going to be a while before I realize that. So basically I put the whole thing on. I have to use uh, persuasion again to try to force them in place because the joints are too tight. But I eventually do get it into place. And then just like the other side, I counterboard. And then added the four screws to hold the side on. I still hadn't realized that I'd made a mistake. So you can see I'm putting the in the center support. And as I mentioned previously, I cut these slots a little bit too tight. So this took quite a bit of persuasion to get it in place. And I'm not sure, in fact, I don't think I actually got it fully seated because it was so tight and this is pretty hard to bang into place just because of the shape. This is when I realized that I needed to take the right side off to be able to put the other boards in place. So I had to remove the four screws and then use a mallet to get the other side off. Adding glue to the slot where I'm going to put the inner of the two boards that are on the back. This is the taller of the boards, so the slot is longer. And there's a dado on this backboard which is going to be glued to the support. So one of the things that I also hadn't thought about is I need to get the board into the side slot before the dado is going to line up with support. So that took some persuasion to get it into the sideboard. And then once I had it far enough into the sideboard, then I could use the dead blow hammer to start to hammer it into the center support as well. Then add glue back to the side panel and then use the dead blow hammer to get it back into place. And you'll notice that I'm running into another problem here. For some reason, and I'm not quite sure what happened here, you can see that this is bowed. I think it may be that it didn't fit all the way into the, the data slot at the center support. So it's uh, making it really hard to get this into the slots. But I eventually do, and then I can put the screws back into place. At this point, I knew there was a problem with the board not being completely flat. But I decided to continue ahead because the glue on the other side was dry and I figured why not just keep going see if it's okay when it's finished. At this point I noticed that there was a bit of a gap in the center so I'm trying to close up that gap by using a bit of persuasion and hammering on the board. I had some issues with the other side because one of the, the parts that was uh, forming the channel broke off so I had to use some clamps to try to pull the board into position so that I could then drill it and then insert the screws. Once I inserted the screws, as you saw there, everything stayed in place. And now it's ready for me to put the other board in place. Because there was still a bit of a gap, I decided to hammer on the front to get it to seat more in the slot, which I think it did. And then for some reason, I made matters worse, and the gap worse, by tapping on the center support. And clearly I didn't notice that because now I decided to drill, 
the two holes and countersink them, and then put screws in to make this permanent. So while narrating this video, I realized just how much I over-engineered this shoe shelf. I mean, it's not going to be holding much weight because shelves are really light. So I don't really need these screws on the top to hold it to the center support. The glue is going to be just fine for that, but, you know, I really went overkill on this one. The final piece to go into place is the French cleat that is mounted to the shelf itself. So I added a little bit of glue, also added some glue to the side slot, and then used a scraper to even out the glue on the cleat. And then I could put it into the two slots, it just uh, fits in there fairly nicely. And then countersink the holes on one side. add the two screws, which is probably way more than I need, and then I repeated the same thing for the other side. Finally I drilled some holes. I didn't pre-drill these with the CNC machine, so I just uh, drilled these where it looked about right, so that I could add some screws to hold the cleat to the shoe shelf as well. I filled all of the holes with wood putty, let that dry, and then sanded all of them to make sure that I couldn't see any vestiges of the screw holes. I did most of the painting by hand with a brush and a roller, and then near the end it got this Wagner sprayer, and it's actually quite nice, but I was a little bit concerned about the overspray, so I didn't really use it too much. I started marking both the left and the right side of where the board would go, so that I could just visually center it. It doesn't have to be that accurate. So here I'm making sure that it aligns between the two marks. And then I want to pick up where the studs are so the screws can go firmly into the studs. I needed a bit of a space between the baseboard and the bottom of the French cleat, and it turns out that my small level was just about the right thickness for this. I started with the center screw, so that if this wasn't quite level, I could pivot it around the center screw. And then I pulled out the short level, which took a little bit of work, because it was in there pretty well, put the longer level on, and it turned out to be perfect. And then I could add these other two screws, one on each end. This screw went into impact mode fairly early, which told me it was going into the stud for a strong support. And then I found the location of the stud on the other side, countersunk it, and then put in the screw. And again, notice how early it goes into impact mode. So I'm confident that this is going to be far stronger than it needs to be. I probably should have put something on the floor, but uh, fortunately it was easy to vacuum everything up. And then it took a little bit of fiddling, because from the top it's hard to see where the center is, so I didn't have it quite centered initially, but just a little bit of fiddling and moving side to side, and it dropped right into place. I'm very pleased with how this turned out, and my wife is as well, probably the more important thing. As I mentioned, there is a mistake here. My wife doesn't see it. She asked me to not tell her where the mistake is, so that's a good sign. She's happy with the quality of it. She's happy with the paint job. She's happy with how it looks, so I'd say that's a good job. This has been a really rewarding experience as well. Uh, I've never done a woodworking project like this, and so I'm quite happy how well it turned out. I'm happy with the painting. My wife has declared the painting to be a good job. And so I'm ready to start working on more complicated projects. The next one is going to be the pantry, because there's no storage in our pantry today. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and found uh, something interesting in it. Please give me a thumbs up, comment below if you have questions or any feedback or suggestions, and also please subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, you can hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I have new videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.